I'm gonna be putting temporary tattoos all over my body because why the hell not? I've wanted to cover my body in temporary tattoos for a long time. So I bought these temporary tattoos on Amazon and we're gonna put them on my body. So they come in these sheets and you have to cut out the ones that you want. They're exactly like the type when we were kids and you would just get a sponge and some water and put it on your skin and it would last for a couple days. So the first step is I'm gonna cut them all out. So the reason I wanna do this is because I've always been fascinated by tattoos and I've always wanted some ever since like high school, but I'm someone who changes my opinion on the things that I like so often that I'm scared I'm gonna get a tattoo and then years later be like, that was a stupid idea. And not only that, cause I know people talk about how you know, it'll always symbolize that period of time in your life when you thought it was a good idea or you were into that thing. But it's more so of like the placement on my body. And I don't know, there's something about just skin that is completely untampered with. That's so beautiful. Oh my God, this one kind of looks like Mewtwo. That's Mewtwo. These tattoos might not necessarily be what I would get if I was actually going to get a tattoo. What I'm craving the most is cursive writing on the sides of my finger, either saying something like eternal love or divine feminine, but tattoos on the sides of your fingers fade incredibly fast. And also, tattoos on your hands, I feel like are probably the hardest to cover up, especially on the sides of your fingers, because makeup is not gonna last very well and you can't really wash your hands. And not that you ever need to cover up a tattoo, but it is nice to have the option. When I was in high school, I was really into learning everything about body modification. Piercings, tattoos, all kinds of like weird extra shit, like branding and microdermals. And I wanted to get like all the piercings. I wanted to get my tongue pierced. I wanted to get my nose pierced, eyebrow pierced, spider bites, anti-eyebrow, my nipples pierced, Christina piercing, which if you don't know what that is, don't look it up. <laughs> I wanted to get my belly button pierced and I did do that when I was like 22, I think. And I felt like I was too old to be getting it done. Like I'm 22, I'm ancient. Yeah, no, 22 is not old. Which by the way, speaking of, I feel like everyone always feels like they're super old at their age. Like no matter what their age is. I remember feeling this way when I was 16 and I was getting my driver's license and I'm like, oh my God, I'm old now because we're always constantly aging. So the only thing that we have to compare anything to is the fact that every year we're older. The only constant is that we're getting older and older and older. So it's easy to focus on the fact of like, oh my God, I'm, I'm rapidly aging. And especially the older you get, the faster time goes by, which is terrifying because time already is going by so freaking quickly. I'm 26 years old, but I'm closer to being 27 than I am to when I just turned 26. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm like practically 27. I would do that every single year. Would always focus on the fact about how I'm practically the next year up. So I'm practically 27 and I'm not living in the present moment. I'm not enjoying being 26 years old. I'm constantly focused on the fact that I'm almost 27. So I'm aging myself even more rapidly by pretending to be an age older than I actually am. And then because 27 is so close to 30, I'm like, oh my God, I'm practically 30 already, which I'm not, I'm in my mid twenties. So I've been focusing lately on reminding myself that my youth is in the present. That's a lyric from a SZA song, your youth is in the present. And I love that so much. Every morning after I meditate, I read a list of affirmations of things that I'm trying to program into my mind or limiting beliefs that I'm trying to overcome. And one of the affirmations that I tell myself every single morning is my youth is in the present. And I focus on how I'm 26 years young. Like that is, that is baby status. I am a tiny little baby, a tiny little baby. And I shouldn't be focusing on the fact that I'm almost 30. I'm in my mid twenties and I should enjoy that. And you know, it's so easy when you focus on looking at new wrinkles that are appearing every day, which I know in these cameras, you probably can't tell that I have wrinkles, but I definitely do. Most people my age do. I find lines. I mean, my lines aren't that fine on my forehead. They're kind of, just, there's a lot there. I'm, I'm very expressive, but even like around my eyes, seeing your skin aging, it's easy to be like, oh my God, I have wrinkles. I am old. Remembering that when I'm 80, that's when I'm going to be wrinkled. When I'm 80, I'm going to be looking back at this time of my life. I'm even going to be looking back when I'm 50 and being like, oh my God, I looked so much more youthful back then. It's so important to focus on your youth rather than you constantly aging. The hard thing with these tattoos is everything is written backwards. 
because then when it's on your skin, it'll be the other way around and be the correct direction. But that makes it very hard to read what some of these say. What does that say? This one, there's a colon, and I don't know if it goes with the word next to it or not. Reminder, gently, reminder, rel, relo, rel, what the hell is that? Okay, okay, can we use like the backwards camera of a phone to see what the hell this says? Oh, wow, this works amazing. Gently reminder, relax. It doesn't say, <laughs> it doesn't say gentle reminder. It says gently reminder, relax, which, oh my God, this is amazing by the way. Find your peace, beautiful. Time heals all. Mm, I just made a TikTok about how that's not true. I wish you were here. Oh, okay. Speaking of, oh my heart, I wish you were here. Do y'all wanna hear about my love life? <laughs> I need to give you guys an update on what's going on in my life. Where, where I'm at. What's my love life like? <laughs> what it do? What it do? I think we should get into that once I'm actually putting the tattoos on my body. So I'm gonna fast forward this, get through all the cutting, and we can skip to actually putting them on my body. Took a little snack break. I am back. That took more time than I expected to cut all these out. Now it is time to kind of decide where they're gonna go on my body. So when I say that I'm gonna put tattoos all over my body, I don't mean like covering all my skin like with a sleeve. I mean kind of like Ariana Grande or Miley Cyrus, how when you first look at them, the, oh, oh, this is not recording. Okay, recording. More like Ariana Grande or Miley Cyrus, where when you first look at them, the first thing that you notice isn't that they're covered in tattoos, but when you look a little bit closer, you notice like, oh crap, they actually have like a hundred tiny little, little tattoos in random places all over their body. That's my aesthetic. I love that. If I'm ever going to get tattoos, it's definitely going to be just a bunch of tiny little ones all over, which is why I love this because these temporary tattoos are tiny. So I got bowl of water with a sponge. Let's start putting them on my hands, I guess. Cause that's what I'm most excited about. I'm scared. I'm scared to fuck this up. I'm certain some of these are gonna end up being fucked up. All right. It gets to 10 seconds, two, three, 13, 14, 15. And by 10 seconds, I think I meant 15 seconds. Okay, let's see how it turns out. Oh, it's so crooked. It's so crooked and it's so small. Damn, I really fucked up the first one. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, well, <laughs> carrying on. I'm really scared to put the words the wrong way because there's like 20 different ways these words can go and they're backwards as it is. So I'm really scared. <laughs> So I have to talk about this one. Who's done it? That says, I wish you were here. That one really fucking triggers me. <laughs> and let me tell you why. Let me, let me just give you an update on where I'm at in life. What's going on? What the past couple years of Panini has looked like for me. So I feel like my life has been very stagnant for the past couple years. So a little over three and a half years ago, I broke up with my ex-boyfriend who I was dating for over four years and we lived together for like three of those years. Um, not because anything was terribly wrong in the relationship, but my soul was telling me to leave. There was just a, a billion little things that were wrong and I knew that I was settling, that my soul was not growing in that relationship. Broke up with him shortly after my 23rd birthday. I grieved the relationship while I was in the relationship. And so once it was finally over, I was so excited to be single as an adult because I had never been single as an adult before. Before him, I was in a year long relationship straight out of high school. And look, it says find your peace, which is what I did. I was finding my peace within myself. So for the first year of me being single, I did not want to be in a relationship whatsoever. I was so happy to be single. I am a Libra sun, Libra Venus, Scorpio Moon, Scorpio Mars. So I love love, I love dating, I love romance, I love intimacy, I love sex. Um, I was really excited to explore my sexuality and, and sleep with whoever, whatever I wanted to. And so I was a complete hoe. 
complete hoe. I was a fuck girl. I was very scared of commitment and especially being in two back-to-back -back relationships for you know over five years, like five and a half years being locked down. I was like, I just want to date and explore the world and kind of get my confidence up because in high school I was not a hot commodity. I didn't have any romance in my life for the most part until my first relationship right after high school. So besides those two boyfriends, for the most part, I didn't have any romantic experience. And so I just wanted to date and kind of get my confidence up that I am a hot commodity and that people do want me. And so that was really nice. Um, and it was about a year into being single that I was like, you know what? I'm starting to warm up to the idea of having a boyfriend. I'm kind of tired of just casually dating. I want, I want to fall in love. I want to have such a deep connection with somebody. Pretty much during that year of being single, the only times that I actually felt really attracted to people, they were incredibly emotionally unavailable. And anytime someone was actually into me, I was not into them. <laughs> I did not want a relationship with them. It was after a year once I started warming up to the idea of actually having a boyfriend in my life that I dated someone for about a month and he was trying really hard to make me his girlfriend and bring up to the idea of that. That's a whole story. He's, he's a whole long story in and of itself, but pretty much around the time that I started opening my heart to him, he ended things with me and told me that he wasn't over his ex and he's not emotionally available and he doesn't want to keep seeing me. And I was like, what the fuck? This is the... Like this pattern keeps happening. I keep attracting these emotionally unavailable guys. I don't understand. And I love researching everything to do with dating and love and romance and relationships. And I didn't understand why I kept falling in this pattern. So I was researching it and everything online was talking about psychology of like, oh, because of your upbringing, if you had emotionally unavailable parents, then that feels comfortable to you. And so you seek out those experiences. And I'm like, no, that doesn't make any sense. This doesn't feel comfortable to me whatsoever. And it's not like I'm seeking it out. Like these guys don't give any signs from the beginning that they're emotionally unavailable. Like even just swiping on dating apps, anytime I would feel like energetically drawn towards someone that we would vibe on the first date, I only felt the vibes with someone that's emotionally unavailable. That has nothing to do with like my psychology and me seeking out comfort zones because I wouldn't be able to tell that until time had elapsed. So after lots of research, I found Lior Alexandra on YouTube and a video about why you keep attracting or why you keep dating the same kind of person. And she was talking about the law of attraction. And I was like, oh shit, this is starting to make sense. The, the thing that got me into the law of attraction was my love life. I'm like, that makes so much more sense to me than like, I'm seeking this out because it has to do with vibes. It has to do with like how I energetically feel about them. She was talking about how if you have these subconscious patterns in your mind where the way that you were brought up or whatever's happened, this like trauma in your mind that you'll keep attracting those same kind of experiences to you unless you remove those blocks from your life. So it was about January of 2020 that I was like, okay, Law of Attraction is real. This wasn't the first time that I had heard about the Law of Attraction, but I didn't believe in it before. So about 10 years prior to this, my mom made me watch the movie The Secret, talking all about the Law of Attraction. And I did not believe in it at all. I thought it was the biggest bullshit ever. But when I was reintroduced to it, with Leora Alexandra talking about why I kept attracting the same kind of guy over and over again. I'm like, okay, this, this makes sense. This makes sense. So I started doing all of the healing work, the things to attract someone that was emotionally available. I would say affirmations and do EFT every day about how I'm attracting an emotionally available guy. I had previously written a list of qualities right after I broke up with my ex of everything that I would want in a future partner. I wasn't trying to manifest it. I was just like logically, like I'm not going to settle down unless I find someone that reaches all of these qualities. And there's a list of like 15 or 20 things, like a lot, I was very picky. So I already had this long list of qualities of what I wanted, but now I was specifically trying to attract an emotionally available guy. And about two months after that, I met somebody. So I had decided around that same time too that I was done with dating apps. I was so over it. I'm like, I'm gonna meet somebody in real life, in person, you know, at a party, at an event, through friends, like wherever, I'm gonna meet somebody in real life. But I was also struggling with my health at that time. And so I wasn't really going out much. So I kind of accepted that it might take a while for me to find somebody in person, but that's okay. I'm just gonna stay single. 
And then later, a friend texted me asking, hey, have you been on Bumble lately? And I'm like, no, I'm done with dating apps for life. But the next day I was like, you know what? Why not? Let me just go on Bumble. But I'm only gonna swipe right if he's the one. I'm not going to use whatever normal kind of criteria that I would decide if I'm gonna swipe right on somebody or not. So, you know, I was not serious about being on there. And then I found him and his picture was like glowing off the page. Like he looked familiar, not in the sense that I thought I knew him, but just like familiar to my soul. I couldn't describe it at the time. And that was March of 2020. So we were texting for a while, but by the time we were coming around to planning our first date, the world was in lockdown. So I was like, well, let's do a video chat date then. You know, this weird video chat thing that everyone seems to be talking about. <laughs> you know, it was not like a normal occurrence to video chat people that often back then. And in the second that our video connected, I felt this like gut feeling within me where with all of the guys that I'd been dating in the past, I was looking for a very specific gut feeling that I never experienced with any of them. But I, I felt it with him, the instant it connected, I was just like, oh, like it hit me in my gut. And we connected better than anyone I have ever in my entire fucking life have connected with. Like everything that we wanted out of life was exactly the same. Um, our second video chat, because we were video chatting for a while, waiting for the pandemic to blow over in a couple weeks. That never happened. Uh, <laughs> but for, you know, the beginning we were video chatting. Our second video chat lasted six hours, which is absurd. I can hardly stand even video chatting my best friend or my family for more than an hour or two, but this, breezed by six hours and when we hung up the call it was 11 11 p.m and i was like oh shit that's a sign so i thought i found the one and when we finally met up in person like a month later after going on five video da chat dates everything just felt so right and so peaceful and like his touch just felt so right and anytime in my mind i'm like oh it'd be nice if he put his hand on my back right now or if he moved my hair in this way anytime i thought that he would do it like we were so psychically linked it was crazy like the touch was literally perfect and i could go on and on about that but yeah i really thought that i found the one but then after we slept together i started acting more distant and cold and like a fuckboy, and I was scared that he was just, didn't actually like me, that he was just using me for my body. Um, he was giving lots of mixed signals, like he was giving these signals that he thought that I could be the one for him too. Like, he also seemed really like, holy shit, who are you and how have I met you right now? Like, he was so, thought I was magnificent. Um, but he was also going down how often he would text me and he would only text me if it was something generally related to sex. And I'm like, are you just using me for my body? So I knew a lot about attachment styles at that point, and he was showing a lot of signs of being dismissive avoidant and emotionally unavailable, and like he just didn't have the capacity to open up his heart. Like he wasn't in a place in his life where even if he met Beyonce, he wouldn't want a relationship with her because that's just where he was in his life. So I had this really deep conversation with him about like what's the status of his heart and explaining how, you know, the psychology behind attachment styles and everything and calling him out on his shit and he was like, oh shit, you're right. It was like if I popped a cork from his subconscious and he was realizing all these limiting beliefs that he had about relationships and so he gave it a week to think about it and oh, this is so cool looking. Oh my gosh. Decided that, yeah, he's too emotionally unavailable as much as he really, really likes me and wants to keep getting to know me. He knows that it wouldn't be fair for me, eventually, he knows once it would get to the point where it would turn into a relationship that he would get scared and bail. And rather than causing me that harm after time passed on, that he'd rather respect me and end it in the beginning because I'm very clear about how I was not there for anything casual. He heavily insinuated that he just needed to heal and that he would be back. Of course, he didn't say that specifically because he the the one thing that that boy does is he motherfucking respects me he respects me like nobody i've ever met um, so he would never say like oh you should wait for me i'm just gonna go heal but he heavily insinuated it and our last you know conversation was over video chat and it felt more like a date than a goodbye like it was ridiculous and you could tell his eyes he looked like he was breaking his own heart by ending things and that was two years ago <laughs> and he hasn't come back 
And I've been trying to manifest love <laughs> for two and a half years. I've been single for three and a half years. It hasn't happened yet. This is crooked too. Dude, I'm doing such a bad job. <laughs> I have too many tattoos on my hands already. Till the beginning of the pandemic, I thought I met the love of my life, but he was also emotionally unavailable. And I was so, so devastatingly heartbroken over that. Cause I'm like, what the fuck? I was trying to manifest someone who was emotionally available and he had every single quality, every single quality that I had on that long list of I'm not gonna settle until I find someone that has all these qualities. I had never met anyone. I, I had met people who I thought were close, but then as I got to know them, I had like 80% of them. He had a hundred percent everything except for emotionally available. And that was specifically what I was trying to manifest. So when he left, I thought the universe fucking hated me. I thought the universe was like dangling, like here's this exact perfect person, everything that you had journaled and wanted in your life, the exact person you were trying to manifest, and I'm gonna rip them out from underneath you. Fuck you, you don't get anything that you want in life. I was absolutely de devastated. I, I, I'm like, what's the point in being on earth if this is, God is just torturing me all the time. I'm trying to manifest someone emotionally available and God gives me this, the perfect person who has every quality I've ever wanted and I thought was equally into me too, but he left. So the moral of the story is sometimes when you're trying to manifest something, the universe gives you what you need and not what you want. And in order to manifest someone emotionally available, I had to clear a lot of the limiting beliefs that I had about like, the universe is out to get me, God hates me, I never get what I want. Um, and any time I'm attracted to someone, they're not attracted to me or they don't want to stay with me. Um, or that I need a relationship to be happy. That was like the biggest lesson was my fixation with love and romance that i needed to learn to be happy in the present moment and be emotionally available to myself before i could ever attract someone who's emotionally available and it's been a long 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 healing journey i tried dating after he left because if he doesn't want to be with me then i'll find somebody who does deserve to be with me but the universe kept sending me shitty guy after shitty guy when previously i always dated good guys and so it was really clear the universe just wanted me to be single as single can be so I can heal and learn to be happy without external romance. And so it's been over a year of not being on dating apps and only dating people if they fall into my life. I still have yet to meet anyone who compares. The video just before this one I posted was all about how the law of attraction and manifestation isn't about receiving what you desire. It's actually a spiritual lesson in learning detachment and learning to be happy in the present moment. And I have had to learn that, Lord, let me tell you, <laughs> to the depths of my soul. It feels like everyone else in the world, they get to half the level of detachment as I have and they manifest their ex back or somebody new in their life. And I'm like, I don't understand why nothing is shifting in my life. It's, it's been a journey. It has been a journey in these past two years since I met him. He, he changed my life completely. Him leaving caused me so much pain that it sparked my spiritual awakening. I went from being very atheist to very spiritual, very, very spiritual, way too spiritual in such a short amount of time. It's been a very painful journey of healing and learning that I am worthy of love, that God is not out to get me, that I absolutely am manifesting the man of my dreams and he'll come in divine timing and that I don't need him to be in my life in order to be happy. I've had good days and I've had bad days, but for the past like five months, I've been generally happy every single day. I'm like not needing a boyfriend or not thinking about wanting a boyfriend or wanting him almost every single day for the past months, which is what gets me really freaking fed up of all these manifestation YouTubers that are like, manifestation's not supposed to take a long time, or you can have things instantly. You just have to remove your limiting beliefs. You just have to remove your attachment, your need for it. Like, bitch, I've been living that for months and it's not here. And if you say that and they're like, well, that right there is clearly your attachment. And it used to frustrate me where I would say that out of frustration of like, where is it though? And I've let go of that. It's, it's exhausting <laughs> holding on to this pondery of where it is. I don't care anymore. I'm just living my life. But knowing that they tell you, oh, it's supposed to happen quickly and it hasn't, you know, you can look around and see that it's not. 
not that I focus on that all the time. Sometimes weeks go by and I forget that I'm even trying to manifest that. But the fact that so much time has gone by and it hasn't manifested, it makes you wonder sometimes. So where am I at in life now? I'm moving to LA in a couple months and I feel like for the past couple years my life has just been like a block. Like I've been trying to manifest many things, not just a boyfriend, many big things in my life. Moving apartments, moving to LA. And even that, there's been blocks on the reasons why I can move to LA, but it's finally happening in like a couple months. I'll update y'all when that happens. Oh no. All right, <laughs> that's gonna stick. <laughs> I've got tattoos going on. Oh, I want one right here. Oh no, I, sh I shouldn't have done it like this. <laughs> So like this, it looks straight. Like this, it's fucking crooked as fuck. Oh no! <laughs> well, I don't think it was meant to be. Oh, I might end up removing that one. Yeah, that's uh, oh, that's bad. Let's do the butterfly tattoo. I wanna move on to something nicer. This camera keeps stopping recording. Oh, and the battery's dying. Great, great. Okay. This one, we're not gonna fuck up. This is really hard to do alone. I've been filming for like two and a half hours and this camera keeps stopping recording every 10 minutes. So there's a lot of this that I've forgotten to record. Ah, that's my favorite one. Look at it. Look at it. Ah. Oh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. We're gonna put a feather behind my ear to symbolize being able to hear the angels. I can't see it. Good thing these are all temporary. Oh my God. Always wanted some in between my tits. <laughs> so we're gonna do that. Okay. Let's just pray that that's straight. <laughs> it's as straight as I am. Let's see how this one turned out. Not bad. Let's put some words underneath my rib cage. Continuing on, talking about love and moving. I've questioned faith a lot of times whether manifestation is real or whether I'm going to actually ever manifest somebody. We talk about manifesting a specific person, and I have given up on that because it's been two years. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I've manifested so many other things in my life, things that I'm much less attached to, so I know that it's real. Like, it's been proven to me so many times that it's real. It's just ironic and funny that the number one thing, the first thing that got me into manifesting, which was trying to attract new love into my life, hasn't happened yet in over two years. About two and a half years, actually. It was January 2020. I'm recording this the end of May 2022. Very cool. So, I'm gonna remove this. So I grabbed alcohol and some gloves so I don't accidentally remove the tattoos on my hands. Even though this one might be nice to remove. So let's see how well this works. Yosh. Oh no, I thought this was supposed to work better. Oh, it's kind of working. It's working, guys. It's working. Oh. If only real tattoos could be removed that is something else that I could put in its place. And this time, <laughs> do it correctly. <gasps> I could do this guy. I don't have full faith in myself, guys. I don't have full faith in this at all. How did I do it last time? This is different, right? So I guess I want to conclude about having faith in the universe. You know, I make all these videos about manifestation, but some of my biggest manifestations haven't happened yet. In fact, when I tried manifesting it, I got the exact opposite. I'll make another video more in depth on why sometimes when we manifest things, we actually get the opposite result because I still have full faith that I'm going to manifest the love of my life, whoever he is, even though sometimes I still get attached to the guy who was the catalyst to all of my healing. Doesn't mean that it has to be him. Beautiful. Let's see, oh yeah, that's, that's still not great. <laughs> I just think it's a bad spot for a tattoo. I don't know. Okay, well. <laughs> oh, I need that cat. Where's that cat? This kitty. And so normally I didn't want to talk about my love life 
on the YouTubes because I definitely didn't want to mention the guy who broke my heart two years ago because I don't want to boost his ego anymore in case he happens to stumble upon this video, which like, he probably won't. <laughs> He's very much out of my life. I didn't want to mention him in a video. But then I figured, why not? I kind of want to share where I'm at in life. And he shaped the past couple years profoundly for me because he changed the way that I perceive dating. How cute. Just one on my toe. Hi, baby. Would you like a tattoo? I don't think one would work on you because you don't have any exposed skin. Carrie, don't drink the water. <laughs> And here is the final result. So that concludes the video. I had a lot of fun putting these tattoos all over my body. I don't know why temporary tattoos are not a more common thing. Like, kids use them all the time. As long as you didn't have parents that were like, tattoos are the devil, and this is a bad influence on a growing mind. <laughs> my parents were not like that. They definitely let me use temporary tattoos. And I think that it should be more common with adults. Like, this is so fun and a great idea to tap into your inner child and just have fun for a day. So I hope some of you guys try this idea out. Thanks for chatting with me. I send you all my love. Bye.